are in our electronics factory in Erlangen and we are basically an internal customer for the Siemens Industrial Metaverse. So when the whole topic came up, you know, it was fairly nebulous. So what we set out first to do is to define our factory North Star in order to see in what areas the industrial metaverse actually brings productivity, is actually beneficial to our processes. So what you're looking here is basically six areas identified and two different sides. We start off in the before world, so everything when it comes to planning, validating, but also optimization in a virtual world. There we're talking about immersive collaborative layout planning, we're talking about generating synthetic data in order to train our AI algorithms, and also using physics simulation in order to validate processes or changes to processes before we do it in the real world. And on the other side, we see basically everything that we are doing during the operation of our lines and production system. And there we have first and foremost the collaborative layout planning, so all those different questions that you need to answer in order to run a productive factory, how can we do that in a more collaborative, in an operational driven way? And obviously extended reality connected technology in topics like maintenance, but also training and just worker guidance during day-to-day -day operations. And last but not least, IoT when it comes to our real estate, real estate infrastructure, sustainability data and also the simulation capabilities that come with having that data available. For now, if we look at the very first layout, the very first use case, the collaborative layout planning, basically, I think Alex mentioned it beforehand, everything you see here will move within the next two years. So every single box, every single little piece of metal needs to be moved in a new location because we are expected to have increasing volumes here as well as changes in our production portfolio, which, needs, which means we need to introduce new production systems. We do that not into the pen and paper and just have group discussion. We, do that. we are doing that in a 3D collaborative inversive environment. So we start off by actually having a 3D laser scan of our factories generating a point cloud and we're modeling our digital twin in 3D asset against that point cloud scan. Once we have that very trustworthy as is layout, we can then move those assets into their future positions and then we leverage that new digital twin of that new layout, put it in a VR environment and let experts like our EHS, health and safety managers, our real estate responsibles, just put in the goggles, walk, actually walk through that new layout and tell us, we missed something there, there might be an issue, please change that. So we can make sure we get it the first time right without even moving one machine in the real world. The second that we're talking about is, um, and we can go back and see that station in action, we are actually using synthetic data already today in our productive robot cells. So just behind me we have one robot that is picking, um, has an intelligent pick into a bin, able to, with a very cost-effective camera system, locate where that piece is basically located in the moment and pick it up very intelligently. This we're doing already with synthetic data. So what we're doing is using, combining AI and for example now what NVIDIA brings to the table, photorealism, in order to create training data to train exactly those types of robot operations. And we can visit that robot in just a second. It's behind me and it's picked its millionth path, its millionth part, I think, a couple of weeks ago. What we're now talking about when we're talking about photorealism is actually, okay, how can that help us work with different type of objects. This part that we see here in our productive use case is pretty simple, but when it comes to metallic reflective surfaces, we need photorealism as well as different lighting capabilities in order to make um, viable synthetic data out of that. And the last use case that I want to show you is basically our operational driven collaborative problem solving. What you see here is the demonstration of what is possible today. When we are running our factories, every single day we have to answer different kind of questions. So either, you know, is our output what we expected? How is our quality like? What's our energy usage, for example? The digitalization, the IoT connectivity that we have here in our factory makes the data available, but the metaverse will change the way how we interact with that data. So it will be a central virtual place where all that data come together, where experts across a factory network can come together and how they can and where they can interact with very precise virtual twins 
from systems down to individual robots. So how that's looking like at the moment is basically we're starting at the level of our production network here in our business unit motion control and then we're basically entering the data-driven industrial metaverse of our factory here in Erlangen where we can see all the different KPIs that are important to us on that level and where we can also see deviations in our production areas very clearly marked here with that yellow cursor. So when we jump into the factory basically we are now navigating our photorealistic digital twin of that area that you see here behind me. So if you look a little bit closer that was the um, robot station that we stopped up a little while before and just in the background we can see our fully automated robotics line just to, to the left of us here. Again here also on the line level we have the KPIs available and we also have the possibility of simulation. Meaning obviously you can simulate future changes but you can also feed past data into that system digital twin and simulate what happened in the past. And thus, for in, in our example, for um, in that example that we show here, a uh, laser cell that might have an issue, for example, with dirt or something on the lens that caused a little bit of a bottleneck temporarily. And if we move further through our digital twin here, we'll end up at this specific robot that you see down here, which is basically our cobot setup where human and robots work together in order to screw um, different parts together. We have also here, again, all the different KPIs that we are looking for on that level and it also tells us that there is some kind of deviation. We have access to, for example, our PLM construction 3D data. We have access to the different data warehouses, service requests, but also time series data, such as the sensor data that we're pulling out of that robotic arm. For example, here, our, the driver data of that robot. Basically, demonstrating how close the virtual and the real world can already be connected. So what we're seeing here is the live connection between our physical asset and its physic-based digital twin behind me. And just to show you that, yes, it is live, I can stop that little guy here and show you. So it has a little bit of a minimal delay, right? But basically, there is that live connection. And the good thing, which doesn't really translate when I just show it like that, is because that is 3D, that is, a that is a virtual space, I can also change the angle when, when looking at that kind of process that the robot is doing here. So I can decide for now, okay, now I need to look from behind it and see maybe if I can see something else. Maybe I can focus in on a different area. And the interesting thing as well here is not necessarily just the actual just live connection, it's a possibility to look into the past, at least for a little bit. So if I switch from kind of real-time mode to our replay mode, I can basically make sure to show you kind of the last couple of seconds of that movement that I just did, which basically demonstrate to you, right, if, I, if, I'm if I'm looking at the sensor data that I've showed you beforehand and I see something unusual in that data, I can put down around that time frame, I will pull the data, feed it back into my physics-based digital twin and kind of understand, have a visual context of what happened. We start the robot again, just to work as normal. <laughs> 